Uh, first, an administrative announcement. If you've ever spoken at a conference before, you know that the worst possible time to talk is at the last session on the last day. So I'm going to mix things up a little bit. It's going to be like a variety show for my presentation. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you about the most badass vacation that me and my friends ever went on. I'm gonna talk about millennials and I'm not gonna hit you with cold, hard data. I'm gonna just tell you about a real experience. I hope you get some ideas about how we're adapting the world of travel. Second, I'll talk for about 10 minutes and afterwards, my colleagues have written a musical, a mini musical that is about millennials and the future of travel, the creative chaos. So mentally prepare yourself that there will be singing on stage and that's going to happen soon. Uh, we're going to throw the word hack around a lot and when we say hack, what we mean is to understand a system so well that we can reorganize it to create something new. I'm the founder of Museum Hack, and we're like the Cirque du Soleil of museum tours. See, we think that museums don't have to be boring, and so we hire the world's best tour guides. Here's a photo of some of them. We hire actors and educators, science teachers and musicians, and we lead people on very fast-paced, fun adventures throughout the museum. People hire us for private tours, company team building, storytelling workshops, things like that. I'm really proud of our growth over the last year. We're based here in New York City and we're entirely bootstrapped. Last year we had a dozen employees and only one full-time person. Uh, this year, we have 24 employees, nine full-timers. We're in Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and New York. And I'm happy to say that this year, we're going to do a million dollars in sales. Thank you very much for all of your support. Um, so let me backpedal here and talk about travel. About a year and a half ago, my friend Tynan called me up and said, Nick, do you want to go on a cruise? Now, you all work in the travel world. You know that millennials and cruises are a tough sell. Ding, 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 millennials hate cruising. We think that uh, the food is terrible, it's tacky, uh, bingo, norovirus, things like that, but I'm open to new things. Hey, I've never had norovirus, so, <laughs> so I said, tell me more. My friend Tynan had used this cruise sheet website to find a repositioning cruise. That's like a one-way ticket when the ship leaves one market and goes into another. This time it was leaving Canada and going all the way to Japan a big trans-Pacific repositioning cruise, the most number of days at sea of any repositioning cruise. So about 10 of us signed up, and we boarded the ship last September in Vancouver, Canada, bound for Tokyo, Japan. Usually, I spend my time museum hacking, but for the first time ever, we did vacation hacking. And I'm gonna tell you now what we did to make that trip so special. We were not your typical cruise passengers. <laughs> Here's a photograph of our group. And we had to unify, because if you do the numbers, we were outnumbered 100 to 1 for our age demographic. I mean, just look at how this lays out. 10 millennials, over 1,000 senior citizens, 16 days at sea. What could possibly go wrong? 
This is the story about how we made it an amazing adventure. Step number one, form a gang. <laughs> you may have noticed those green bandanas in that first photograph that I showed you. These became our gang colors. I purchased a whole bunch of these bandanas beforehand and we made rules about wearing them so that everybody had them. Rule number one, you must wear them at all times. Rule number two, if not, you had to do 10 push-ups. This visually brought us together for all the other people on board the ship. But how do we stay in touch? Control communication. If you've been on a ship, you know it's hard to know where your roommate is, let alone nine of your closest friends. So. Some of us were geeks on board, and we used our software skills on the ship to build a live chat server using the ship's onboard Wi-Fi. This didn't use any expensive internet minutes, it was just the local network, and it was so helpful for us. Some ships have this feature, but ours did not. After a couple days, we wanted to open it up to the other passengers, so we created with somebody's laptop an intranet server that would allow passengers to log on to our website and post rumors and gossip on board the ship. <laughs> Things like whale sightings, we had a forum, like a missed connections on Craigslist, <laughs> maybe a little bit of matchmaking. There were zero matches that were made on board. Um, the newsletter that goes out on board the ship, if you've cruised, you know every night you get a newsletter in your box, and it shows the activities for the next day. Uh, we were captivated by this, and we decided, obviously, we need our own gang newsletter. <laughs> we printed 100 copies on the onboard laser printers and passed them out to the passengers, bios of the gang members, website address, things like that. It started to grow in popularity, and my friend Tynan said, what if we just take the existing newsletter and scan it in, and with Photoshop use the same logos, but just tweak it a little bit? <laughs> Basically to create a fake newsletter. He did this with six unsuspecting passengers that he had dinner with one day found out their room numbers, and began printing this in secret and adding it as a supplement to their newsletter. Thus began the first issue of the Siemens Sonar. <laughs> now, the plan for this newsletter was to create slightly outrageous statements that masqueraded as facts. Um, we thought this was hilarious. It really culminated uh, in the day. The highlighted passage says, for security purposes, all rooms are equipped with high-resolution hidden cameras. We thought that this was hilarious. The other passengers were a little bit creeped out. And those six people, we had to retract the newsletter. Uh, we ceased publication immediately. It was time for us to create a little bit of goodwill, create rituals. We had a secret handshake that we were more than willing to teach the other passengers. We also bought 100 Mardi Gras masks to distribute at formal night for all of our favorite people. There was a rival gang on board the ship, the Naughty Knitters, <laughs> and they were the first recipients. This was great. Um, we also had a call and response going, whereupon if someone saw the green bandanas, we taught them to say, cruise hard. And then we would yell back to them, cruise life. By the end of the journey, over 75% of everybody on the ship was doing this. We couldn't even walk down the galleys. The other 25%, well, we won the majority, and that's all that really matters. The awards ceremony that we did was probably my favorite thing, though. We looked for passengers each day who best exemplified the cruise hard spirit. Like this woman, Desiree, um, who had this fun meter. It was a badge that pinned onto her chest. And like each day, she was at level five out of five. And Desiree was like so nice to us and all the other passengers. So, before the cruise, we had bought a bunch of these sports trophies. 
Each day we would give them to the passenger marching through the dining hall, uh, like in a conga line, blowing harmonicas. And when we got to Desiree's table, we made an announcement. We're like, hear ye, hear ye. And we presented her with this award. This is an actual photo of Desiree's award. When we gave it to her, tears were really streaming down her face. They were tears of happiness. <laughs> For me, this was the ultimate travel experience. We felt like we had a sense of agency over an otherwise programmed experience. It gave us that sense of ownership. But that's just me. What do other millennials want? What do millennials think of as the best vacation ever? To talk about that, I have invited five of my colleagues at Museum Hack. We're like a creative think tank, and these companies hire us for brand hacking and other things. I said, let's make a song just for Skift about what millennials, you guys come up with it, they're all millennials, and so they're gonna talk about the future of travel. Here it goes. college degree got a startup job and now I want to go overseas I'll take pictures with the locals to beef up my news feed but I don't know where to go or how to proceed I know I'll check the internet oh man but there's so many websites there's like Yelp, TripAdvisor, Expedia I don't even know where to start because I find it difficult to make a decision and it's even harder to commit millennial problems, you know. So many options, I don't know where to start. I literally can't handle it. What should I do? You should try Victoria Falls. What about Niagara? You can go on the Maid of the Mist. No, I want to do something obscure or nothing at all. I think we can handle this. Hey, Amy, I saw your post and I thought I could offer a little bit of advice. Cool. Last year I studied in Amsterdam Then back back round to see some other cities But hostels were so basic it felt like my dorm room So I couch surfed and used Airbnb It's a really good idea One day a local beggar came up to me And she spoke to me in her native tongue <laughs> I fit in so well that she couldn't even see I felt so real Hashtag experience Listen Amy You should go to Burning Man You don't need no clothes and you don't need no money All you need are dreads and goggles and some LSD Don't think I can handle that You don't think you could handle that? No Well you definitely could not handle the last time I went backpacking Oh yeah? There was no electricity and no Wi-Fi. <gasps> Don't go chasing Wi-Fi. Get it in the lobby of the hotel next door. There's also museums, coffee shops, and some public squares. We can give our followers more. Hey, Amy. Yeah? Let's be travel mates. Yes. Let's take advantage of the on-demand economy. We'll be spontaneous, spin a globe, and go wherever it takes us. Yes. We just need a globe. All right. I'm a globe. Great. Ready? <gasps> Middle, Middle of, of the, the Arctic, Arctic Ocean. Ocean. Yeah, let's try again. <laughs> North, North Korea. Korea. <gasps> yeah, no, right. okay. One more time. <gasps> Granada. 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 <laughs> Wait, shh, call. Hello, mother. Hello, father. I just hitchhiked to Granada on a yacht where 
I wash dishes. Local fishermen who taught me about fishes. Met some random crazy strangers. <laughs> Neralia, escaping dangers in far-fung places. Out of reach, like DiCaprio, DiCaprio and that will be the beach. beach. The beach, the beach, party on the beach. My name's Meg, call me Ocean. Um, okay, my name's Amy, I'm American. Tell me what you've done here so far. Well, besides Australian men who play the guitar. Oh my goodness, well, I did yoga, meditation, natural teas for relaxation. Want to improve myself spiritually. So it's downward doggy and vinyasa for me. Whoa! Do it all. I want to give it all I've got. Read Vagabonding by Ralph Potts. Whoa. Or one by Timothy Ferris. The four hour work week. Four hours? Next, no. What? First to Granada and then. Sierra Nevada's I want more. I'm ready to explore. I have you ever volunteered? Volunteered? Yeah, volunteered. Spent some time in third world countries. Now my life is live more humbly. Oh, it changed me. Volunteering. Elephants in Botswana are so rewarding. Well, how often? I've been to Russia. I met Putin. What? But I'm vegan. I don't eat gluten. Oh, it was hard when I was in Rome. So I brought my special hemp seed dough from home. Whoa, you are so resourceful. Thank you. Why don't you come travel with us? Oh my goodness, I'd love two mates, but where should we go to next? <gasps> to, to the, the east. east. Oh my goodness. Heard you talking about traveling so far across the globe. There's so many ways to get there, but I bet you didn't know. If you want to go but hate to plan, let me give you some news. You could sail, you could sail, so now join me on a cruise. No way. You know, market research says that cruises are coming back. Say what? It's really awesome. There's a bowling alley and a movie theater. That's crazy. Only a small chance of getting norovirus. Wait, but. Ah! I'm Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray. I'm Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray. Wait, but cruising is really bad. I'm Nick Gray, it's like a Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray. I'm Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray. I'm Nick Gray, I'm Nick Gray. From the East Coast to the West Coast, I have sailed the seven seas. I have traveled with my buddies, oh, the lovely sights I've seen. If you're looking for experience you can't find on TV, then you're overlooking awesomeness, so sail away with me. Okay. We're game. That's right. Cruise life. Ah. Uh, Ship. All right. All right. All right, guys, you know what? What? Every day I'm traveling. International waters. Slot machines. Oh my God. Big buffet. Ocean breeze. Oh my God, guys, this reminds me of the time I got food poisoning in America. Oh my God, Greece is super cheap right now. Hashtag YOLO. Have you tripped balls on the tip of Machu Picchu yet? No. It's awesome. Wait, but Amy. What? Where are we going to disembark? Hmm, I have an idea. We're going to boldly go where no millennial has gone before. India! We landed today in Goa, we're having fun by the sea. We heard not to drink the water, but heat makes me so thirsty. Why didn't you bring your Nalgene? Or even your camel back? I didn't want to add more weight to my ultralight backpack. Whoa, oh, where, where should, should we eat? eat? 
Wait, let me see. I'll check on Foursquare and we'll reserve there instantly. Come and see ya. Won't waste time wandering around. Check out this local pub I found. We can use Tinder. Find dates for dinner. Instantly. 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 No, no reservations. Sleep at train stations. Traveling free. I didn't even bring a book. I have my Kindle and, and my Nook. Nook. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. amazing. We'll go stargazing. Sky maps are free. So, Amy, what do millennials really want when they travel? Well. You taught me that millennials want spontaneity. You taught me that they want personal growth. And you, you taught me they want community. So they want an authentic experience. Millennials grow, millennials know, millennials shop and use the hop stop. Millennials type and smoke on the pipe and party all through the night. Millennials phone their parents at home, they ask for money, they're in their twenties. Millennial girls, millennial world, millennials have a go! Oh wait, but guys, 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 yeah. guys, guys, what? but don't forget to... Selfie time! Instagram it! Facebook share it! Snapchat it! Wait a minute. Yeah? But Amy, I I'm just a little bit confused. What? What makes an authentic experience <laughs> authentic? Well, an authentic experience is one that we create ourselves. So guys, we did it! <gasps> Best vacation ever! Gesture to Nick. Nicola. Fallen. Fallen. Yeah. Ready? Now. Smile. Oh. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.